Hello there everybody and welcome back to episode 11 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six. So today is a big leap for us as we will now truly evolve to the, in today's episode away from a village and towards a city. So I did take the liberty of fast forwarding a little bit here. So we have finished the warehouse there, which will be utilized for food purposes. And I want to focus today into the things that will get us ahead and how to get yourself towards the next check marks. Because if you go over here at the uh, rank of the quarry, we gain the ability to build administrations and embassies. That is the point where we can start playing the big map. Currently, we cannot do that yet. Without administration, you cannot really interact with your environment. So, administration is therefore one huge milestone for each and every city and will change the world, so to say. The problem about it is, though, that you need a couple of unlocking technologies and it is a very, very personnel-heavy whole thing. So to give you an idea about it, so to do administration, we need administration points. To create administration points, we need to build administration buildings, and these must be supplied with paper. Without paper, that will not work. So we need to build up an entire industry for paper, and then we need to shave off people that will go working at the administration. And we will need to pay quite a substantial amount of research points until we get there. And so, yeah, it is all in all a pretty heavy uh, step forward. And this is going to be where, where we're going to head towards to next. I must say, though, that at 500 people, you are usually far away from being capable of getting all the things done, especially if you are newish to the game. Our city here so far is thriving. We have only five more days until our new farms are spitting out their first harvests, which will be probably quite a grand thing. And we also have for the very first time since a pretty long period, a positive in our treasuries. So. The next thing I want to do here is I want to re-enable the imports of iron ore here. I turned them off entirely. I want to stop that. We are going to start importing up to a level of 140. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to re-employ the people making the metal. As we have upgraded our food production now tremendously, it should be easily possible for us to get the smelters and the tool makers back online. Well, maybe not the tool makers right away. Without metal, they can't do anything. So for our city to thrive, we need one thing most badly right now, and that is a another lab laboratory. Currently, we are sitting here now on 40 researchers working, and this is not getting us enough for sure. So we're going to put another lab over at this corner here. Let's make it like that. And that will be the first big thing we're doing, a second lab, as we need more research points for all manner of things. Whatever we want to do, we need research points for that. Currently, we are quite limited with that. We will be up able to upgrade the labs another time in the future with more metal and mechanisms at that point. But this is still a pretty long time to go until we get there. So we'll still have to wait for that. Therefore, another laboratory is the best way to go, especially since we will now have hopefully all the, the food that we could ask for. So we could also get ourselves already um, some extra housing going, as these researchers will need to live somewhere. The more experience you gain with this game, the easier it will be for you to discern where you will need 
housing before it even becomes shortage. So we're also going to go here for a bit of stone road upgrades, as I really find that this will get us along quite nicely. This will, by the way, destroy your stone stockpiles in a uh, really quick manner, so be prepared to to deliver more. But we have stone lying around literally everywhere, so to say. I mean, that stuff basically doesn't spoil at all. It's stone, after all. So, yeah. It's a good idea to spend it for once. As stone roads will also make your subjects happier. It's one of those things again. All right. Can't wait to see the next harvest to come in. And we also get finally our precious metals back in. Overall, our economy is a little bit strained right now. But we should be getting there eventually. What does... Um, what you can always do in the long run with cities like the Cretonians, we can create labs, churn out technology, and increase our food income and start exporting food at a large scale. That's always another ch uh, chance how you can go for things. Okay, so let's go super fast mode. Let's see if... Uh, the lab gets finished after the housing. It's a typical occasion. Oh, we have gotten a new. Co uh, we we have, uh, we we got a new job. We need to do the new job first. The old job is not interesting anymore. I don't know what it is with these guys, but here we go. So yeah, forty people can work here. Forty people will work here, but well, ah, we're just recruiting twenty for now. I try to avoid overshooting uh, large uh, packs of uh, new people, as this can be really, really nasty if you uh, if you take things too fast. All right, so we are currently exporting uh, fabric, but let's see, we obviously run out of cotton at the end of the season, which is a little bit of a shame, but whatever. I don't want to churn out yet another farm, as we are currently already... We've already upgraded our, our farming business by a lot, so... Bit by bit. Alright, so let's put those people in there. 20 extra researchers. And as you see here, the city is so freaking happy that we could easily afford more people, but... The thing is, if I'd be just double-clicking up there, there is a high tendency of things spiraling a little bit out of control up there. As we will see more and more nonsense being done, and... No, not nonsense being done. We're, we're seeing more and more services not being fulfilled, people can get unhappy, and yeah, it's just... Uh, a very, very dangerous slope to pick up too many people at once, so... Or people are asking for more religious fulfillment, and I feel like it is time to settle down a nice little shrine next year. So, these researchers that we put in there are currently not really very effective. It's uh, very, very uh, important to upgrade the second lab ASAP, as that is the point where you can really expect some, some serious science points from these folks. Okay. So now we could research paper making if we'd really wanted to, but I personally would recommend you to go for a couple of other things that are really, really cheap to have now. So as this episode's focus is uh, upon getting ourselves transitioned into the new challenges up ahead of us. So we're picking up now Bloodsport as this unlocks fight pits. That's a really dirty cheap way of getting yourself, uh, getting your, your people a tad bit happier. And we're picking up Posh Relief. And we're picking up Bathing. Do we have enough points? Yes. All right. So that's quite a lot of tech all at once, but it has to be done. So we need to stop exporting our cut stone from here. So we're going to put it down like that for a while. This will drop our income, but it is a necessary evil. 
As you see there, we did earn quite a substantial amount of denarii via exporting cutstone, but we need it now for our own city. So let's check this out. First of all, we can now head on over to the lavatory, and as you see there, we need cutstone now for that tech, because to upgrade these, you need that. Then the bathhouses, well, they will require the cutstone as well. Therefore, we need to wait a little bit until we can get ourselves down with that. But the fight pits, that's what, that's what I uh, was wondering what I was missing there. So we are also capable of upgrading our wells now, which I strongly recommend to you. As it costs you only a, ch a few chunks of clay, and at the same time, they are going to fulfill people more. As you see here, quality plus 33% up. That means the um, service quality of wells goes up now too, because they are just of a higher quality. Later, we will be able to put into these uh, wonderful thingies machine, uh, machinery parts, so that's got to be pretty good too. Oh yeah, and the uh, next shrine has been finished. So, shrines can also be upgraded, so we're going to check on that as well. This will cost a pretty heavy amount of furniture, but these are the investments that are really getting yourself uh, pretty ahead. Oh yeah, okay, this is... Uh... 500 tech points. It's a new one to me, so I had to look it up. But let's uh, let's go for the fight pits first. So fight pits come in various sizes, as you see there, and they offer various amounts of services. As our city is already a little bit larger, I need to check back if our people actually like fight pits or if Cretonians are too pacifistic for that. They like it. It's really always important to check back if it's if a service is as needed for your civilization as you think. Sometimes people are not like you think they are. <laughs> okay, we are going to make ourselves the uh, second size of that one. I don't know, blood sport next to the fields. Sounds a tad bit wrong to me. <laughs> Let's put the... Blood sport right next to the uh, smithies and the uh, altars. That's okay. So fight pit goes here. And the overall happiness of the city is uh, really going places now. I also want to get myself some more carpenters employed as we obviously need more furniture. Okay, let's authorize 20 more people. And that's where we turn into the quarry. So now we can build embassies and administrations. So at the embassy side, let's see, never built one. They need paper too. And this, these are this is where we can take action into foreign lands. So we need those fine materials for these as well. So we can't really afford to export um, the cut stone anymore, which is totally bad for us but it's not that much of a big deal we just need to export more food i'd say meat seems to be extremely um popular here so we're just going to set up another pasture in this vicinity here probably need to take care of that we get ourselves a um that's a good spot that we get ourselves some uh, janitoring into the vicinity as you expand your city into areas, you always need to take care of that, but I've been talking about that already enough. All right, so upgrading your buildings is one really good way of getting yourself uh, a happier city. And the larger your city grows, the more important it is to have a happy city, as you will really run into a dead end if you don't expand your, your city heavily enough into these uh, businesses. So, speaking about businesses, I'm going to go for more smelters and more smithies yet again. Authorize more people, as we are going to export more and more meat now. Like I said before, it is not the ideal occupation for the Cretonians. We would be probably better off with exporting fruit and veg, but at this point of the game I don't dare to. <laughs> 
we need it for, so, for ourselves. So, Fancy Hearth is also a really cheap technology that doesn't cost us much in terms of uh, science employment. And now we are also capable of upgrading our hearths bit by bit. As we have a couple of these in our city by now, this really does pay off. But again, at the same time, currently we, we don't really have that metal to spend. So let's see, we're currently consuming 10 pieces of metal a day, and we're producing 20 pieces of metal a day. So yeah, that works out just as we want it to. Okay, so let's move on over to another prestigious object, the bathhouse. So the bathhouse is really a dirty, expensive little thing, but it is also a very, very powerful way to make your, your citizens happier. So we're going to set up a bathhouse right next to the fight pit. Oh, the fight pit, dang. The fight pit, by the way, does manage itself quite easily, so you you didn't miss out too much. I want to go over it real quick, though. So bathhouse, I keep it small, as these things tend to grow extremely costly if you go and make them too large. So we're going to add in basins. There it goes. Basins, add in uh, bath capacity. And then you have benches, adding for relaxation. And here you get one really ungodly uh, amount of stuff that you need to pay. But yeah, it's so worth it. Now, at the fight pit, it's really simple. People who like it can get there and get their face beaten in. You can assign a couple of people to get their faces beaten in, and then they go there and beat their faces in. People join and watch people beating their faces in and are happy about it. The end. Jokes aside, that's really what it does. You get a, another big chunk of fulfillment here for meager 250 research points, and by that point of the game, you might already have noticed that it ain't that hard to keep the people happy. The biggest pitfall with Songs of Six is to try to grow too fast. When the food spirals out of control and stuff like that happens, you usually have the, po the problems that you could, uh, well, lose your city on. The thing about this game, though, is wicked. You gotta see it like as follows. I make it look darned easy and uh, darned harmonious here. But if something starts going wrong with this game, things start going wrong, wrong really badly, really quickly, and in a rapid succession. Like, if you, to give you a good example of one typical spiral, when we go into the religious uh, areas, crypts can be added into. The uh, Bretonians aren't too crazy about crypts, so they, they don't freak out that hard. It's much, much worse for other civilizations, as you see there. But, crypts. The moment you build them, people get happy. The moment there is not a single slot available anymore to bury people at, at the uh, crypts, at least in previous versions, I don't know if it has been weakened, the fulfillment for the crypts immediately is off, because people are like, oh my god, if I should die today, I can't be buried in a fancy crypt. I need to go mad. And from that point on, your people start to be unhappier. Then they probably start tending stuff not as good anymore because there is a riot happening. During that riot, your services are not going to produce any further drinks. So by the time the riot goes, your fulfillment for taverns goes down. And after the riot is over, the people will realize there's no more booze and then they will probably riot again and start smashing other parts of your city. And then after that riot, they will notice that the parts they just smashed are not functioning again and you might notice that this can spiral totally out of control. That's why I try to prepare myself that well. But on the bright side, to give you a really positive uh, thing about it, it is not ever your city lost. That's one thing that fascinates me about this game to no end. You will be always capable to bounce back. Your city will shrink, your cities, your citizens will die, you will have a lot of blood, gore, and stuff, but eventually there is a there will be an equilibrium again, where people are just happy with the status quo, 
and they won't be rioting again and from that point on you can just rebuild carefully step by step but it is possible so you don't need to worry about things i don't want to uh, give you a false impression here that you need to be overly careful or anything by all means this can be sometimes the most fun to <laughs> to, to see your cities die and all but i'm getting uh, ahead of myself so we are starting to turn into a massive export nation for meat for whatever reason there is there has been a price explosion lately and i'm digging it we also gain more and more research points so we should probably also start investing into another thing that i like spoilage so if you research this tech stuff in your storages will spoil slower this is really really good you really really want that so fine dining is another thing but let's see a bakery upgrade i think this required an ungodly amount of iron yes yes so as you see now it is less about expanding stupidly now at this point in the game you can do a lot of other levers as well as you can upgrade and refine your industries quite decently now it's up to you how you want to go here this uh, city here I've mentioned it several times in the comment section already is a uh, true mess it, it is one of the most horrible cities I've ever played out of the simple reason that it tries to achieve everything due to being a tutorial city which is not good Specializing your cities is better, but you know, I, I like this janky little town as well So we are now super fast forwarding and as you see here the bathhouse construction takes quite some time Even though we got 24 masons working non-stop here and They they even get to use tools by now. Let's see how many tools they got. Oh, yeah There's already a 28 person saturation on the tools, but yeah it's just Cretonians. They suck at this. Don't you worry, though. I will get to the species stuff soon because I want to show you that you can just uh, let some certain industries get run by the right people and how. So we are ready for that part soon. Anyways, the bathhouse is being completed now. Bathhouses need coal. They, they eat that stuff. But at the same time, they also churn out a wonderful aura of luxuriousness. So bathhouses have their own luxury meter. And as you see here, it's one of the bigger ones. And bathhouses are equally loved by pretty much everybody. There's literally only two, two species that are not valuing them too much. The ones are savages and the other ones are divine. Probably they keep themselves clean by their divine senses. What do I know? Either way, bathhouses, stupidly powerful. As you basically only invest metal and cut stone into it, and you get a massive return of happiness for it. I mean, check out my, my services bar lately. It is insane. Just by adding in fight pits and bathhouses, we have entered a new dimension of happiness. And there's still so much room to uh, get extra fulfillment out of but we also need to be careful about these things as we can easily stumble back into oblivion food stockpiles are dwindling again we are re-importing at that point i don't mind importing as well because this gives us just some some money to earn um, some expenses to play with we could cut them down later but for now things are quite good even like that so one thing that i meant to add in since a while as well is a hospital i think we have enough time hospitals are quite annoying they require opiates and tools as requirements but at the same time they are very very valuable as medicine in games like these is uh, super high-tech fantasy magic well ish but you get the idea all right, we're also churning out more furniture now, which is uh, also halfway decent, but we do need so much more than that. Oh, wait a second. We can't actually upgrade our first shrines. Small ones too? 
Ah, these need to cut stone. Luckily, we have more Crater Worshippers than Athuri Worshippers, so that ain't that much of a big deal. So we can now easily go into Opium Farming. Hmm, sweet. But we're not going to do that. We're going to import a low amount of that for the hospital, but you could do so. I, I just didn't look for that specifically. I looked for this one. So this is quite costy. And, ah, well, we're going to delay the restaurants for another episode. So, worshipping with style, but it is also just quite a powerful thing, as we again have here a religious fulfillment which isn't topped off. And if we upgrade it, quality of these goes up, they also look fancier, and people are again happier with it. We also have now finally something our uh, carpenters can totally strive towards to. It ain't that much of a good income or anything like that, but... Well, some things just work out slower than others when you're playing certain civilizations. You just should not worry about that too much. Okay. With all those little improvements, you, you see here we could authorize a hundred people at once. Of course, we won't be doing that because I personally always recommend you to sit back and analyze what is the next uh, weak spot of your economy, what is the next uh, pitfall that might be problematic for you. So, yeah, it's always a good idea to just uh, take it slow. All right, opiates, and then the uh, hospital. The hospital is just like the bathhouse, one evil little bugger eating your resources but we're uh, going to slap down a hospital right next to the bathhouse and uh well we're going to keep it uh, small there we go the more bits we put in the more tools are needed but since we are producing tools this is not that much of a big deal so we're going to keep it like that this is, I think, quite okay. Ah, well, we're, we're going to go for something like that. We can always expand. Every key, always keep in mind you can always expand later as needed. It is never necessary for you to take things too quickly at that point. You can always slap in some extra bits. The opiates that we ordered are not needed for the construction of the building, as you see there. This is not necessary but it is necessary for the operation of that building. So yeah, the necessary tools needed for this, oh yeah, it, it'll take a time, but eventually they'll seep in. There is not much to explain about the hospitals as these work like any other service building, with the only difference that they are eating fabric and opiate to churn out their service, but that is pretty much all that is different about these. It's really important though that at some point you go for hospitals as sanitation matters the larger your city grows. But as you see here, we are struggling with delivering tools there. But I don't mind at all because it is, uh, to me, a slow and steady progress uh, process of progress. <laughs> to uh, get this done. In the meantime, I would recommend you to just upgrade your hearths into fancier pieces. And the more you do these things, the more capacities you'll have for disaster. That's always the way I like to see this. And with the current state of affairs, the city is totally stable. We can totally do our thing for the next couple of years and we will outro at this point as I want to go for the whole paper making administration shenanigans in the next episode more um, more precisely and more as a main topic because this is just something that we need to work on. Okay, so thanks for watching you all. We have now our first hospital. Obviously, we don't have any opiates delivered yet, but that's okay. We'll be getting there. The consumption of the uh, opiates isn't that horrible, so as you see there, even a small amount of these will suffice. 
it'll take a while until you have your yourself geared out with those, but you're gonna get there. All right, leave me your comments down below. A thumbs up would be widely appreciated. Consider subscribing. And as usual, check out the description box. There's lots of cool links in there, leading also to the playlist of this tutorial series, so you might want to check that out if you are new to the series. Also, check out Patreon, PayPal, or buy me a coffee if you'd like to support the channel. These are the preferred methods, and I'd be really, really happy if you'd give them a look. Thanks for watching this video. This is really, really the best thing you can do to support me as well. And I appreciate you hanging out even after the ad roll. We're gonna continue next time with lots of exciting things for this game. See you there and have a wonderful day.